subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. I'm with Surjit Bhalla, well-known economist, well-known actually for batting for the Modi government. He's now on his way to Washington DC where he is India's new appointee as executive director of the IMF. Mr. Bhalla, welcome to the print. And my first question to you is about the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership which the Modi government has not signed, the 16 nation block which is led by China but interestingly although you bat for the Modi government and have done so very strongly you have said that India should sign this pact yeah. is that correct yes and what I've also said and what the report also says this was a uh, report uh, submitted to the Commerce Department and it there were 12 members in it right uh, I was just the chair yeah you headed the rep you headed yeah, the I headed it uh, but it was a real classic teamwork and for a year okay now the conclusion that H lag reaches which is a high-level advisory group, group reaches which I obviously fully endorse and very interestingly uh, you know I've worked on government committees sure. for the last 20 years uh, with various governments um, and I've written dissent notes okay uh, but what was encouraging about this report not a single dissent it was really not even consensus it was unanimous uh -huh. whatever the recommendations now I'll come to our set our recommendation was uh, that we have to join trade agreements like our set but we should negotiate from a position of strength okay that we should not just take any deal that comes our way mm -hmm. and I'm very happy that the <coughs> Modi government has somewhat endorsed that view in their policy but how Be can you say endorsed because the Modi government has not joined our sex so remember what I said yeah and what the report says we should not accept any terms that are offered we should negotiate from a position of strength and we should be very cognizant of our own interests. Okay. So that is what the Modi government has cited mm -hmm. as that the deal and you know we are willing to sign, India is very willing to sign but they felt that our demands for example whether you use 2014 base year or 2019 base year what are the safeguards that we would like which is also in the report on in terms of imports from some of the big nations like China for like example. China for example so the, the and that was not granted so far what is encouraging is that both the Indian government as well as the uh, the Chinese government right. have stated that the door is very much open. wide open but would you agree with the central premise of the Modi government in, which is that cheap Chinese imports which will flood into India if it signs on and will destroy Indian manufacturing. Do you agree with that? Look, what what the government is saying, and that's something I'm also in complete agreement with, that look, every trade agreement has winners and losers, as will this. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as China's exports or imports from China are concerned, we are not the only nation in the world that is worried, has been worried, is worried about quote unquote cheap Chinese imports. So this concern we is have, justified. We have the US, the whole story yeah. in the world today is a US China trade, trade war. war. And the, translated that is the fact that according to the US, according to the U EU, According to Japan, according to most nations in the these, world, China has not played up. fair. Okay. That is why the trade war is there. Right. And that is why even amongst US manufacturers who were the biggest supporters of the US-China trade policy have now reversed course mm -hmm. and are fully in support of what the Trump administration is doing. So you're on board Modi's concerns that cheap Chinese in imports will flood no, the country I'm and destroy manufacturing. No, I'm on board and the correct way to describe the government's concerns is that the trade agreement has to be on mutually beneficial terms uh -huh. and that has not been reached at as yet and that according to my reading of what the China was offering I agree fully with the government. So the, the Chinese were not offering enough? 
Absolutely. So they were not on board the concerns that the Indians had. But having said that, Japan, Korea, all these East Asian giants are all on board. Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, this is international diplomacy, and I will soon be an international diplomat. Don't don't uh, let that stop you from saying what you think. Yeah, and what we do have reports now in the newspapers and by several experts, both in India and the U.S., that there were about four or five of the 15 nations that were fully in support of India's position. Which four or five of these? Nobody days? knows. Okay. But what, would, you, would you like to take a guess? I, no. I, I think Japan was, do you think Japan was? I haven't was studied enough and I really do not know and when I had the uh, honor and privilege of, of releasing, not releasing actually, uh, Piyush Goel uh, released the report, but I spoke as introducing the report. I said, look, it is very important that India gets its internal house in order uh, before or during or certainly not after signing any trade deals. Hmm. I believe, and this is not necessarily the committee's estimate, but my estimate based on research is that the 90% and which the, the, the document documents very religiously and carefully, it doesn't come out with a number, hmm. I'm going to come out with a number, that 90% of our problems, quote unquote, macroeconomic, jobs, yeah. uh, growth, etc., are caused by our domestic policies not being good. Very little has to do with trade deals and the external environment and the world economy slowing down, etc. Right. Only 10%, in my estimate, of our problems are to do with that. 90% has domestic. to do with domestic. But, uh, you know, just, just speaking of Piyush Goel, only a few weeks ago, he was quite gungo about RCEP. Yeah. No, no. But I, I think, think he he's still, I don't want to put words, I think he's still gungo about RCEP. But, you know, he. this is a negotiation. Everybody recognizes it's a major negotiation. And I think Piyush Goel did the right thing by saying we want to we want to join RCEP. Otherwise we will be isolated, he said. India will be no, isolated. No, uh, we want to join RCEP but not on any terms hmm. that the RCEP offers. Right. We are look, we are going to be okay a five trillion dollar economy. I very much believe that and we can go through the math okay. on that. Uh, we're going to be we're no longer a poor developing country. We're going to be probably in PPP terms in a year the third largest economy in the world. Right. So it is no longer necessary or prudent for us to sign whatever comes our way. Hmm. We are an important player in world trade, in world diplomacy, in world affairs. So and signing the RCEP on the terms that were offered would certainly not fit the stature, the goals, the potential and the reality of India today. Okay, let me take you back to 1991 when the situation was far more dire. And at the time, then Prime Minister Narasimha Rao and Finance Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh essentially revamped the economy, even though you had to pledge some of your gold. You know the story yeah, better absolutely. than anybody I know else. Full well. <laughs> now, there must have been some fear and some con concern and some you know, nervousness about opening up. But Where today it seems as if the Modi government is sort of replaying that yeah. fear and that concern. I th this is a, a very important question or point that you've raised, which has been raised by several others. I happen to think that the situation in 1991 and the situation in 2019, October, November, is completely different. Absolutely. You cannot speak about it mm. in the same breath and you can't even compare yeah. we were in dire straits then, we are in dire No way. Now, you you, you said uh, that 90% of the problem lies within, in. with domestic That's what policy. the whole question should be. Asep ko bhul jao. 
But the problem is that it's con one thing connects with the other no. because if your domestic no. economy was in ship shape, which is not, no. you've had Sorry. terrible Gla growth rates, 5% worse is in the last and what six does years. Absolutely. Look, let's go to the economy now, which is okay. at the heart sure. of your questions and I think the heart of, of what people want concerned. to know exactly. The, yeah. And what the report, remember the report started October of last year. Right. Okay. So, and the draft of it, first draft of it was completed by May of this year, much before our subject concern. So, let's look at that. And what we point out is that <coughs> our macroeconomic concerns, our exports, hmm. our GDP growth are constrained by several factors and we are not growing at our potential or anywhere close to our potential. Right. And why the was reasons that? we yes. offer is that first and foremost, and I'm happy to expand, I'm not being general, but this is a very important point, is the mindset mm. of Indians, uh, whether it's opposing trade deals or whether it is opposing, um, you know, we, or, or how we deal with uh, the economy, our own macroeconomics. In specifics, we went out and, and the mindset, which was a control mindset, mind right. you, okay? Despite all the reforms, and while we on all the reforms that have taken place, and while we on the reforms, I want to put on record, and I put this on record before, about two years ago, a uh, year ago, in print, so it's not in casual sure. conversation, that if you want to look at economic reforms under, since 2014, that the total s cumulative set of economic reforms that this government has introduced is greater than all the reforms done since 1991, including the 1991 reforms. Despite demonetization, because oh, it was demonetization that wrecked think, the economy. I, I, it did not wreck the economy, and let's discuss that. Okay. I happen to believe, and when I say I believe, I have produced papers, I've given empirical evidence, right. and now we even have empirical evidence given by the IMF, mm -hmm. by Gita Gopinath, who was a very s strong critic of demonetization, That's like right. you appear to be. Yes. Now, what was... I, I, I see it everywhere around me, that demonetization was, had a huge effect. Anyway, go now, on. Yes. Yes, no, no, that's yeah. very no, important. No, no. Let's look at what economists, including critics mm -hmm of demonetization, scholars of demonetization say what the impact was. Right. As you know, in October, in November, December 2016, yeah. the Congress party, yeah. Prime Minister, ex-Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, uh, as well as several other experts said that demonetization would cause a five percentage no, point. No, he said two percent actually, Dr. No, no, he said just come two percent no, contraction no, no, of the economy would take place. If you bear with me, I will okay. uh, happy to answer. They had said I've got three and a half percent was the estimate of most people mm -hmm. that the G Indian GDP growth was three and a half percent thanks to demonetization and we had previously grown at something close to seven and a half, eight okay. percent. So okay. it's five percentage point. And they printed articles on okay. this. Let's not debate that. But I had then written that look and Ivan Vermani wrote separate articles that our, our individual estimate of the impact of demortization and please listen carefully these are two independent studies we had said that it is two percent for the quarter uh -huh. in which demortization took place and therefore 0.5 percent overall mm -hmm. The Gita Gopinath and IMF study, which is also done by, was done with NBR right. scholars, etc., at Harvard and mm -hmm. MIT, etc., the best and the brightest, they have come out with an identical estimate of the impact of demortization. But why and is it that one other has been able to communicate one this message? One, sec one second, Jyoti, I have not listened to what you said. After I finish, okay. I will do. Okay. And what this Gita Gopinath paper says is that the effect of demortization dissipated very quickly. Mm -hmm. So therefore, first, the effect of demortization 
was 0.5 percent on an annualized basis, which right. means rather than okay. the economy growing at seven percent, is growing at six and a half percent, vice versa. Right. And second, that its effect, according to most people, has completely dissipated by now or dissipated in a couple of quarters. So even by the beginning of 2017-18 fiscal year, and I would date it around June of 2017-18, it was completely disappeared. Which then raises the question, Is that what, what has happened? this raised? Exactly. Why do we have the slowdown? Yes. Now, I know what you're getting. Yeah, absolutely. So because just give me time. Yeah. Why do we have the slowdown? And the report goes through great pains hmm. to identify. Now, we have the following hmm. that I have always consistently believed, documented, etc. Like the rest of the world, mm -hmm. but not like Indian and Indian, most Indian experts, that the real interest rate, the cost of capital is a very important parameter which affects investments mm -hmm. and then growth. So you're saying interest rates are too high in India? I'll tell you how high they are. Yeah. They are, and then if you give me one minute, I'll show you. They are the highest in the world. Uh -huh. Now, you please tell me with inflation, I'm talking about the real interest rate. Right. Unfortunately, what a lot of the analysts don't look at the real interest rate. They look at the nominal. They say, look, I saw newspaper, historic lows hmm. for the repo rate. Sure. But it's a historic highs for the real cost of capital. Mm. What the report says is that we should have a real repo rate as the top 10 OECD economies. Mm. You know what the real repo rate of the top 10 OECD economies today is? Yeah. It's minus 0.5%. Mm -hmm. Minus. You know what our real interest rate today is? Mm. 25 which means we need to cut according to the report we need to reduce the repo rate at approximately 200 to 300 basis points so that's a huge deterrent to, to growth. investment and mm. growth and yeah. explains both empirically logically econometrically it explains the slowdown because this thing happened is that why your fdi isn't as good as it should have been by the investment yes absolutely and I have estimated it each hundred basis point of the real interest rate decreases the investment rate by 50 to 75 basis so points. that's perhaps so the first thing so the Modi government that's the first thing the Modi government should do which is well, to drop interest rates well there is something that the Modi government very important question something that the Modi government can do and something they cannot do because it is done by the RBI and the MPC. Okay. What they can do, and today's papers yes. in, has continuously discussed, our report comes out stating that small savings rates, which are in control of the Modi government, yeah. etc., should have an interest rate lower than market interest rates. Okay. But unfortunately, the small savings rates in India are about 200 basis points higher. So this is what they can do. And the finance minister just said yesterday that they are also leaning in that direction. So let's talk about solutions. You've been an so advisor but, but to the Modi government want to come for some to, time. I yeah. want to finish this. Okay. Now, so what is the problem? Yes. The problem, I believe, has to do with the RBI MPC. Hmm. And they have kept interest rates, real interest rates at very high levels. Hmm. You may not know, but in, uh, and we date, most of us date the slowdown, and you can look at the data, etc. you don't need rocket science, from about June or July of 2018 to September 2018 is the yes. NBFC crisis, if That's you remember, right. all started in July, August, September. In June of 2018, the RBI had raised interest rates to the highest levels in the last six years. So that had, a, cas so that had a cascading and effect. No, no. I think we need to question 
you need to question, but you, you guys never do. Only in India, the RBI MPC is not criticized. Because they're like God, right? They sit in. Yeah. Why are they like they gods? Let me ask you a question. Uh, do you know any place in the world well, we where they are like gods? No. You think. Uh, well, we believe that it's the politicians who have to. And what do you think? You think there are no politicians in England? You think there are no politicians no, in Japan? But why is it that the you politicians, no in, politicians India? in US? Why, why is it that the Modi government, which is so powerful, why is it that they cannot. Adil Baba, that is a very gap. unfair because at the same time you will be the first the print will be the first are bhai rbi is independent aap kya kar rahe ho aur aap mere ko keh rahe ho ke mujhe bataoge no that's a fair point so very fair me, point so must Malalit, be telecast this point absolutely okay. so let me come back to solutions you've been an advisor yeah. to this government for some time as uh, with previous governments absolutely as with previous governments one of the things you said is to drop interest rates i've also you've also said uh, previously that the corporate uh, tax right. that was slashed a month or so ago was a very good idea what else do you think that i think personal income should tax be, rates should, should be, be cut okay then uh, they're already quite low they're like about 30 percent <laughs> so one of one of the things that energy energy has to flow show exactly and no bell lawyers have said them up. i'm have glad you brought them up you have to According use the to tax the rich yeah and you know, according to, and I'm sure the print and Abhijit Banerjee and all the rest of yes, you. He came to the I know Shekhar right. Gupta has criticized Indira Gandhi putting the income tax rate at 97 percent. That's right. Okay, which I think unleashed the entire tax evasion, black economy yeah. disease in India. Mm. And according to Abhijit Banerjee, we already have the rich being taxed at 45 if you add the gst etc on consumption we they're already being taxed about 60 65 percent and you're telling me that you are quoting albeit a nobel prize winner mm -hmm. does it make sense you tell me does so it you, make so sense you don't agree what with do the nobel laureate what do you think will happen to tax evasion i'm just mm -hmm. asking you as a genuine question if we raised income tax rates money will according go to Abhijit Banerjee by his we followed him he's got the Nobel Prize we followed him hmm. though I, I would say that uh, the print itself criticized his income tax policy hmm. so and so do you and so I uh, absolutely I think okay. look I, okay. I go by okay what so, I drop, would, so let's not drop criticize I think it's absurd sure so let's drop personal interest rates you're saying personal tax yeah taxes. then i want to come to two major reforms yes that are needed in sure. india yeah and three hmm. but the third one let me do the third one first which is that it is very hard for industry to operate in india or for firms to evolve in india because they have to go through 20 different ministries right. to get permissions something that there was not a single window clearance that's yeah. what the modi government keeps talking about yeah. a single window something and the that Dr. mind Manmohan you and the manmohan singh government talked about something mind you, you can't see where the window is can't find so it something mind you that narsimha rao also and manmohan singh did Absolutely. not do at all and yeah. i'll come to something else that they did not do at all so yeah. first of all is make the climate for industry a lot better in terms of babu giri okay. in terms of dealing with bureaucracy in terms of getting permissions so single vedo apex body which is a very prominent part Fine. of the other now i want to come to two other reforms that are absolutely necessary first agriculture hmm. okay we yeah, you all talk a lot about agriculture. and I'm, I'm sure Abhijit Banerjee etc we all talk about the poor etc and farmers are an important part of the poor people of India hmm. it's not professionals like you or me right. that are part so what have we done with agriculture there have been zero reforms in agriculture ever indeed with the uh, Manmohan Singh government and the Sonia Gandhi government, agricultural reforms took were de-reformed mm -hmm. because we int not introduced, we expanded the PDS system. The we expanded the corrupt, like the corrupt 
PDS, I will come to Manwega later. The corrupt PDS system, Manwega only accounts for about 40, 50,000. Leakage in there, 1,000 crores. Okay. Leakage in there is about 20, 30,000. The leakage in the PDS system is about 100,000, 120,000 crores. So, we have de-reformed agriculture. Okay? And I will give you another instance. So first, we must free up agriculture. The farmers can produce what they want sell to who they want at what price they want hmm. uh, within this is the mandi act hmm. no other country in the world has a mandi act for people have, are, where the farmers are regulated who you can sell to you have to come to a market to they sell. probably sell their land huh no no i'm talking about their produce hmm. land a luxury story okay huh? hmm. their produce i grow wheat i have to go through a mandi to sell it hmm. okay this so is you're saying get rid of all this. Absolutely. Let the, let the farmer or and whoever And get is rid farming. of export bans. Get rid of import bans. We, they should be freed up. So why isn't this happening? I After all, we were supposed to... This so a I new I dawn was supposed to have been ushered no, in. No, no. We should... I am asking. Let me finish and I'll come to the second reform that we have recommended. And I think uh, there was a Shanta Kumar committee set up by this government, the first committee ever in India to recommend the dismantling of the PDS system. Right. You are absolutely right. The government has not yet adopted the dismantling, of the Shanta Kumar, its own committee's recommendations. Right. And it may not adopt what H. Lag says, Which but is what at you least have said. this would be two committees set up by this government of India. So are you disappointed that the government didn't No, no I want to come Shanta to Kumar the other important reform. reform. <coughs> yeah. And I want viewers to know this statistic and for you to know this statistic. Now I'm talking, so I was talking with the farmers right. who generally illiterate, not that well yes. educated. One of India's biggest success stories are professionals hmm. and in particular we see that in software, in services. Sure. Correct? That's our, the only yeah. you know, uh, bright spot. Yes. Perhaps. Now, Financial services, and I'm sure every Indian you know um, who is engaged in financial services is probably abroad. They don't what? manage Indian assets in India. They go to Singapore, they go to the US, they go to England to set up shop to manage Indian Indian assets, not manage so Tokyo assets. So how do you assets. keep them back? Huh? How do you keep them so, at all? No, and that's what uh, the report comes out very distinctly, how mm. to keep them back. That's a, one of our major recommendations. Now, the statistic I want to give you, that financial services exports in India, hmm. circa 2018, 2019 ka jet rate will tell you. Circa 2018 was lower in absolute amounts just a few billion dollars than India's agricultural exports in 1980 when you and I were living in a very poor country and commenting upon That's astounding. and we were importing food hmm. we were heavily food dependent nation tab ki hamari agricultural exports are more than financial exports today when we are saying and you are saying services exports so, unleash so the financial, financial services so, so the financial sector is not regulated is strangled regulated right so as is the agriculture sector it's very interesting agriculture right. traditional crop financial services very new uh, industry. But this is fascinating so unstrangulate the financial sector yes. and we give our policies as to how and we can do it today unleash the farmer drop the personal tax rate drop you interest rates drop the interest rates have an apex body for for industrialists for entrepreneurs for print for anybody to go to that apex and foreign investors right they go to the apex body they don't go through 15 ministries yeah. obviously the apex body will sure. coordinate yeah. but there is and you know what most of the countries in the world have such an apex body we don't but this four-point program that you've given... Four, there are several others. Okay, but, but these main four, four points four that you've given us before you go to Washington, D.C., Mr. Bhalla, thank you so much for speaking to the print. All the best in your next stint in D.C. Thank and you. Uh, 
Thank you very much. This is Jyoti Malhotra for The Print. Please continue to watch our YouTube channel. It's live and buzzing.